Hey, Pod Squad, welcome back. I'm Diksha, and today I want to talk about Boards Blast and wanted to have all the members on of the Boards Blast committee to talk to you about their program and also kind of help us out with residency. I'm about to start if you're just joining uh, my YouTube channel for the first time. I'm about to start in a few days, so I'm excited for this and to chat about board exams and everything that's about to come and hit me in the face, <laughs> which Boards Blast will help me and all of you with a lot, I'm sure. Okay, so I wanted to introduce you all. First of all, Dr. Levick Doane. I hope I said that properly, but um, this is the founder, right? I've, that's correct. The founder of Boards Blast. And uh, just one thing that I can talk about from everything I read, they're, they're all very, oh my gosh, so qualified, incredible people, but she's the ACFAS Education Committee member. Um, and then Dr. Ricardo, which is a CMO, and Dr. Van, who's a CFO, uh, they're both ACFAS Practice Management Committee members. Again, they have so many other qualifications, but I'm just naming one. Uh, Dr. Sharma is a CTO. She's a residency site director at Surgical Christ Hospital and then assistant director at Hoboken, right? Correct, okay, great. So let's um, start off with the first question. What are in-training boards like, and are they similar to the format of the APMLE exams? Go ahead, Sheetal, you can answer that one. Yeah, so, you know, APMLE, I mean, a lot of that is just your kind of standard didactic questioning, right? So it's gonna be multiple choice. Um, when you're looking at the actual surgical boards, and, and there are a variety of different boards, our, our focus is on, on the surgical boards, um, there are four sections, okay? So you have two didactic sections, each one, one is for foot and the other one is for rear foot and ankle. And then you have this, what I would consider a more tricky, um, se um, you know, section or, or part, which is your case simulation. So back in the day, that section actually used to be oral boards. Um, they converted that to case simulation. Um, so basically they simulate cases um, on the computer for you. Um, and you know, it's, it's tough. It's, it, they're, they're not easy um, exams to, to do. Um, and it takes a lot, right? So it's not just learning the didactic material, but it's also about how do you apply it um, and how, how can you pass your case simulation? Wow, okay, thank you. I'm I'm nervous. So, but... <laughs> yeah. so when we took the exam, APMLE wasn't APMLE, it was NBPME. Um, it was put on in a different way, but I believe the format of that exam has stayed pretty consistent, which is a multiple choice exam. Um, you usually take it, you know, within three to four hours and then you're done. Um, the the in-training exam in residency is much broader and it incorporates a lot of training, not just didactic material, not just McGlamory, Coughlin and Mann, PI manual, things like that. It incorporates actual training and, and knowing how to work patients up surgically, which becomes second nature to you. And so that's why, you know, you shouldn't worry about it because everything you know, you already know going into. It's not something you need to open a book for. It's just knowing how to master the exam and that's what we do with Boards Blast is we teach you how to master the exam um, on top of the information that you already know. And just of note, we have no affiliation with any board exam. We have no affiliation with any um, uh, you know, committee that's putting this on. This is a, a private company that has no affiliation. So we just need to make a note of that. Yeah, no, that's, that's actually... Very, very good point. That's something I wouldn't have even thought to ask. Yeah. Uh, so I know, I guess I, I asked maybe a little, you talked a little bit about it already, but tell us more about Boards Blast and how it could be different than Board Wizards. I know I saw a little bit of that as I went through my externships. So, so, board, so I'll take that one. So Boards Blast is completely different than any other board review course out there. And simply because it's a live virtual eight hour course where in the, the front half of the day is spent with us lecturing and telling you what our strategies are. 
based on topic. So, you know, tumors, flat foot, cavus, we really have it organized and structured in a way that makes sense for learning. And then the second half of the day, we do breakout groups where we have each course participant break down a case and we go through um, each section, what they should order. And we kind of test their knowledge and we make sure they understand the concepts that we taught in the beginning of the day. And it's a way to check and make sure they're retaining it and they're understanding what we're talking about and then kind of putting it to the test. Um, we also take those same cases and we have an online database as well. So we have an online database of the cases, but the main part and what makes us vastly different from any other course is the live course instruction in one-on-one -on -one interaction with the four of us who are teaching it. And Boards Wizards is, is a really great tool. I use that for my board exam. The issue with a lot of these other um, courses, and I wouldn't even consider them courses, they're just more like online banks, is that they never give you the answer why or how. How do I work this up? Why is this the answer? I don't understand. Am I supposed to memorize hardware removal or is it always part of, you know, a non-union? There, there's no rhyme or reason. They just give you an answer. And so that was difficult for me because I'm like, well, I don't even know if I'm putting the right thing. And Boards Blast, like Dr. Bricotta was saying, it goes 10 steps ahead of that. Actually, before that, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's very much individually guided. And when people are done with that eight hour day, they're like, I'm going to crush that. I'm going to walk in. And, and a lot of times, most participants have said that the exam is actually easier than the cases that we have provided them. And, and also we have the most number I mean, that we're aware of, of simulated cases as well. And that's what you need is this repetition. And we'd like to say that we, you know, our, what really sets us apart is our strategy. So what we want is we want to prepare people so when they take the actual boards, they already know the answers before they sit down to take it. And what I mean by that is we've had feedback. I said, oh, I got this case. I totally knew what to do. We had done it a million times. Like we, I, I already knew, I already knew how to navigate this. And it's, it's really that strategy and also that repetition and that practice so that, you know, when it's time to do it, it just really feels like it's just another board's blast simulation. And that and that's really what we were looking to do. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this is all, I mean, it sounds like a godsend because um, I've definitely heard how tough, I mean, throughout all my externships, everyone has always told me how much they struggle, how the pass rate can be a little tough sometimes because they just don't feel as prepared. And really, I think a lot of things, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not saying that what we have to prepare for boards period aren't that great, but it's just, they could be improved in the sense that not everyone learns the same. Um, I personally appreciate everything you all just said about having a more uh, more thorough explanations, actually knowing why what we're doing is why we're doing it. And a lot of things are academic more so than what we may actually do in clinic or in surgery. So I really, really appreciate that. I'm excited to learn even more as we go through this. Um, so because you're all probably very good at this at this point, and you all know, all accomplished in podiatry at this point, um, when do you suggest that a resident should start thinking and preparing for these board exams? Yeah, I mean, I think it needs to be an organic process. Um, I know when you start in your first year, obviously you're overwhelmed. It's this very steep climb of trying to get adjusted to, to resident life. Um, I think most residency programs do a good job now about incorporating academics. And, and I would say that if you are at a program where it's not heavy academics, be that person, be that person that gets involved and gets things started. There are a lot of resources out there, but keep studying, keep reading, keep reading articles, ask each other questions, because you really don't want to be in a situation where you're six weeks before the exam and now you're trying to cram. Now, granted, there are, you know, things available that if you had to be in that situation, you had to cram. And we, we cater to that as well with Boards Blast. We do. We try to give you kind of short snippets of every little kind of didactic in, information pocket that you need to know about every topic under podiatry. 
um, we continue to study, continue to ask each other um, questions, work through cases. I think actually not, not just kind of retaining what you're reading and then regurgitating it out, but again, applying it. Put up cases, you know, discuss interesting cases from clinic that went to surgery. Were there any complications postoperatively? How was that addressed? Is that evidence-based? Okay, so one thing that you need to know, and I, you kind of hit it, was that, you know, yeah, maybe we do something in practice, something differently, but that may not be the way that it's questioned on, on these exams. Everything is evidence-based for, for, for this specific, you know, um, exam. And we want to use, and we use evidence-based, um, you know, treatment plans to help you kind of get through it. If you use things that are experimental, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily, you know, going to be, um, you know, part of the treatment options when you're taking the exam. So. And when do people normally, I mean, I know your, your, your program is a little newer, um, the board's last program, but when do people, when do you suggest that we would start your program? So your we, program? we offer our program twice a year. And it is always two weeks before the exam date. And we do that on purpose because we find that candidates retain the most amount of information, usually two weeks prior to the exam. They're doing, you know, slow learning, like Dr. Sharma was talking about, you know, retaining it slower. But then at the two weeks mark, they're like, oh, shit, I got to cram now, right? So that's when things really start, you know, being absorbed in the brain. So. Um, we offer the course two weeks ahead of time, and that information is only available for those two weeks. That recording is only available for two weeks, though that material is only available for two weeks, and it literally forces the candidate to focus on literally every detail that we have said over the past two weeks. And during those two weeks, they're able to email us or text us and ask questions if there's something that doesn't make sense. Um, they're able to get one-on-one -on -one feedback from us or if the case question is, is you know, a little too abstract for them. Um, and it, it really focuses the candidate and it works. So I like that. I like that aspect of it where you're saying get, it's almost like what Dr. Sharma was saying, like incorporating everything as we go along and then making sure that we finalize it, iron it all down with you all, with the program. And, and of course, I've noticed the closer you kind of have a boot camp session right before an exam, the better it goes anyways. So that's, I, I like that. And the course isn't really meant to teach you like on the didactic, right? And what I mean by that is, I mean, you, you already come with knowledge. And so we expect that baseline knowledge. You know, the analogy is like, we're not teaching you the alphabet. You already know the alphabet. You already know how to string the letters together to make the words. We're, we're kind of putting it all together and showing you how to strategically put things together to do well. Yeah, then, then that's perfect. Like, like you all said, you're adding something that hasn't been around before, which is actually helping us approach the exam. It without, I mean, the knowledge is what we gained through everything else, maybe the other resources even, but yeah, that's exactly what was missing then. So I appreciate that. Um, okay, maybe I, I just have a little bit more time. So let me see what else I should ask. Okay, um, well, yeah. This is a perfect question. So how do we manage our time to study when I know I know people say in residency we should think about our weaknesses because we only have very little time outside of what our duties already are and we should focus on our weaknesses. But how how do we find that time? How do we have that find the energy to do all of that? I think um, Dr. Sharma really broke it down for us by saying, hey, it really starts on a day-to-day -day, um, thing where you're not, like as a resident, you're not really, it's not a job and you guys shouldn't approach it as a job. I have to show up and I have to do these things and then I have to go home. That's not what the purpose of residency is. It's an education. It's med school part two, really. And it's phenomenal because you learn the most amount you're ever gonna learn in a, in a certain amount of time. So it's great. But uh, um, you have to approach it that way. So your mindset has to 
be, I am going to approach every day and every patient in pathology with curiosity. And well, what is this disease? I never heard of this disease, or I remember learning it a little bit in school, but I should go home and look up on up to date, or I should in between waiting for a case, I should do a little research on it. And it's picking up those little tidbits every day. Um, and then you add it, you know, you adding 15 minutes of studying every day in a long enough timeline, that's like, you know, 600 and something days of studying that you're putting together. So my advice is really use your residency to teach you, but you also have to have that little bit of curiosity or that little bit, well, well, I don't know everything about a bunion. So I need to read McLamory's chapter to or I wonder what the paper what a paper says. What's the latest paper on the non-union rates of a lapidus fusion? So um that's my biggest advice is and Dr. Sharma said it for sure. I'm just I'm just dumbing it down for other people <laughs> like myself where <laughs> I don't like to just lock myself in a room and study for a week straight. I just can't do it. I don't have the attention span. So um, the best thing for me was doing that, was a little bit every day. And that's what students should do too, 100%. A little, whatever they're doing in their externships, whatever questions they got pimped on, they should go home and write them on an index card and write the answer on the back. So by the end of externships, you have a stack of cards like this that are all the questions that you should know the answers to. And so as a resident, you're just, you're just kind of building on that. That's really the best advice I could, I could give anyone. And the other thing too is, is you take in training exams, not just in your third year, you take it in your first year and your second year, you need to take those exams seriously because that is going to give you the best piece of information of, oh, I, I actually know a lot of this stuff. Oh, I actually do choose a lot of the right answers or, oh my God, I need to get my shit together. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that was me in residency. I was not like Dr. Bucato. I did not... I always waited to the last minute. And guess what? I failed my board exam. So, you know, reality check. I wish I had boards last. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. It's one of those things where, you know, it's you really just have to take the initiative yourself. You know, do what works for you. Just like in school, right? Like, think about it. Yeah. Did your friend say, hey, you really like this program? I'm going to visit this program and let you know whether it's good or bad, right? No, no one did that for you, right? You were interested. You went on your own time. You did yeah. it. So it's really, you kind of have to take the initiative and everything works differently. You know, everyone studies a little differently. So do what works for you, but do something. Yeah, absolutely. Is, are, is there, okay, actually two questions now. Um, I just thought of them, but when when do we take those exams because i actually don't know that and um and then my other question was are there specific resources that you may suggest because i'm assuming you all had something some resources that you use to even create boards class but uh what's what what do you recommend i know everyone always talks about mcglamorys and mans but i want to know what else is out there that is um, maybe i really like I really like my colleague, Dr. Andy Meyer. Um, if you guys don't know who he is, like you will know who he is. He's literally like so well respected and published in our profession, but he has something called the AJM Prism and he's made it available for all students for free. Like it's literally something he's like, he's put together and he's shared with all students. And it's just like a quick, it's 100 pages. That was the premise of it. 100 pages that you can study. It's a quick like recall of just facts. Like there's a workup, there's a bunion workup. There's a trauma workout, and it just helps you just, again, it's not there to teach you things, right? That's what the McLamory is for. That's what, like, those chapters are for. But it's a great, for me at least, like, where I'm someone who I get bogged down on detail easily, so I needed that to really challenge me to figure out what I knew and what I didn't know. What I didn't know, I needed to go read up on. So I, that's something that I always tell students to have, and I always send it to them if they don't have it. I love yeah. Prism. I love Hershey. I love PI Manual. Um, the one thing that I actually really loved was the book by Pfeffer and Easley. And in the back, there's a CD. I don't even know if they make CDs anymore. Am I showing my age? Um, and it had every single surgical procedure on that CD. And so for me, I'm a visual learner. And so I was watching these surgeries and they would give you little, you know, tidbits to be like, you know, breaking metatarsal of one millimeter a day and things like that. And I would be like, oh yeah, yeah. And I, I really like that. 
Chang is also another great book. Thomas Chang, yeah. and you should, everybody should know Thomas Chang. That is a phenomenal surgical book. You, every, every student, every resident should have that book. Okay, this is this is great. Oh, sorry. Go on, Joshua. No, and just to answer your your first question, when when is the in training um, offered? So, um, so again, it's first, second, and and third years are are able to take it. In your third year is when it counts towards actual actual board qualification. Okay, so if you pass it in your third year, you will graduate board qualified. Okay, instead of having to take it, I was very different. Uh, when the four of us had graduated. We actually would take it and then we would have to take it again. We don't have to do that anymore. Um, um, so, the, it, so, sorry, so the in-training is offered um, in October. Um, usually it's early October. And then it's offered again in March. And that's a regular exam, not an in-training exam. So real quickly, I just wanted to um, kind of piggyback on those texts that we talked about. If there's any Temple Podiatry students out there, you guys all have access to that. I don't know about the other schools, um, but again, if you're a Temple Podiatry student, you have access to all those textbooks online through TU um, Temple Library. So just FYI, like it's out there, you have access to it. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, thank you for it, for letting me know about all, letting all of us and the viewers know about all of this, because I think sometimes I think that, or many of us probably think this, that the resources we used as students we should have just, I don't know, known cold, and that's only for students. And then when we go on to residency, we should just be reading journal articles and call that a day. But um, I'm glad to hear that I, I can, in fact, use those other resources as well, along with journal articles and everything else I'll be reading um, to reinforce my material. So yeah, and I appreciate informing me about the exams. <laughs> I know there's a lot, I just didn't know when. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much. I am I can't thank you all enough for creating Boards Blast and I'm sure everyone who's listening and everyone who's already used them before can agree with me that this is something we really needed. And I can already say that. I haven't <laughs> even started, but I already know I'm going to appreciate it, so. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. It was a pleasure being here. And best of luck to residency. Congrats. Yeah, good That's luck. Yes, Enjoy it. Enjoy Thank you so it. much. It's sometimes it's hard to enjoy, but enjoy it. I remember the <laughs> Some last of the best day. days. Yeah, the last day of my residency, I was like, I can't wait to leave. And then the last day, I was like, oh my God, I don't want to see it. I still have like a group chat with my co residents that I graduated with. And we like, we are still good friends. We were in each other's weddings. Like, I mean, oh, enjoy it. So That's so sweet. <laughs> Well, um, just a heads up, like, you know, please check us out at boardsblast.com. We have our Instagram handle at, um, at boardsblast. And we will, the next, like, physical thing we'll be at is ACFAST 2023 in Los Angeles. Uh, we will have a booth there. And a lot of us have speaking engagements. So if you have questions and you want to meet us at our speaking engagements, we post those things on our website. So um people can ask us questions and meet us and we'll pick our brain for anything so yeah and something else too you know like a big thing that uh comes up in residency is like stress and like how to deal with burnout and we have a great form coming up we actually have some of the top leaders in our profession talking about burnout and how they kind of avoid burnout and it's free i mean literally this is the feedback we got from people like you said hey can we have something like this we want to know what these people do how do they prevent burnout? So again, we'll, we'll post all that information. These are all, all you know, complimentary, complimentary and free to you guys. Yes, make sure you, I'll have all the information about all of them in the description below in my YouTube video. So make sure you follow and join them for all their forums because they have a lot of good stuff in their webinars, similar to what Dr. Van just talked about. And again, thank you for all of your time. And my uh, my Zoom is going to close us off in a little bit. So uh, I just wanted to have a clean ending. So anyways, thank you so much. And again, links are below. Don't miss that. Take the opportunity because this is, these are free resources and these are incredible podiatrists. So thank you again. And Pod Squad signing out.